looking at the method of finding out the inverse Laplace transformation using the partial fraction expansion. There is another method which is the contour integration which is more fundamental and which stems from the very definition of the inverse Laplace transformation. You recall that the inverse Laplace transformation Ft is 1 over 2 pi j c minus j infinity to c plus j infinity of f of s e to the power of s t ds. So, in the complex plane, you take the integration along a contour like this, c minus j infinity all the way down to, to c plus j infinity. Let us say, let me say this contour is gone. So, this, this integration is along this. Now, it is easy to evaluate the integral along a closed contour in a complex plane because from the theory of residues, once you have integration over a closed contour that is equal to 2 pi j times the number residues of the poles inside the contour for the complex variable theory. So, what one does is to close this by means of two large semicircles where r tends to infinity. Let me call this gamma 1, call this gamma 2. It turns out that if you have this integral if you have this integral evaluated around this contour for t less than 0, it vanishes. So, integral f of s e to the power of s t vanishes along this contour for t less than 0. On the other hand, if you take it along this contour gamma 2, this integral f of s e to the power of s t d s vanishes for t greater than 0. So, since we have, we want to really evaluate this integral along this contour from this point to this point. But the, the, nothing is lost if you add to this contour this particular semi, large semicircle for t less than 0 and this large semicircle for t greater than 0. So, in other words, I can say this is equal to 1 over 2 pi j evaluate the contour, close contour gamma plus gamma 1 of f of s e to the power of s t d s for t less than 0 because up all I am adding to that a quantity which is equal to 0 and this is equal to 1 over 2 pi j integral along this closed contour for ds for t greater than and it turns out that as far as this contour integration is concerned there are no poles inside as long because all the poles will be here therefore since the, this closed contour does not include any poles this turns out to be zero and as far as this is concerned this will be equal to the sum of the residues of poles inside the closed contour of S2. So, whatever poles you are ha having here, you take the residues of the poles that will be equal to your f of t for t greater than 0. This is equal to, this is for t greater than 0, this is for t, this is for t greater than 0, this is for t less than 0. So, in the inverse, Laplace transform, you will get f of t will be identically 0 for t less than 0 because of this and for t greater than 0, it is equal to the sum of the residues of the poles inside this. The, our discussion here has necessarily to be very cursory because this is not the method that we use for normal evaluation of the inverse Fourier transform, inverse Laplace transformation. I am just giving this to you for the sake of completeness and uh, the partial fraction expansion is so much simpler and that takes care of most of our needs 
we do not really have to do the contour integration, but because this is a basic one and this will have to be resorted to for special types of functions for which we may not know the inverse Laplace transform simply. So, I included this. So, we will not pursue this topic, we just mentioned that the contour integration is alternative method for finding out the inverse Laplace transformation.